All right. So quick reaction here. Um, good news for our patients. Uh, Cyphovri has been approved for the treatment of geographic atrophy. Um, and I just wanted to throw something up online for patients mainly to be able to hear uh, a retina specialist thoughts on the treatment of geographic atrophy, specifically with pegcetacoplin or cyphovri, which was just approved about uh, under an hour ago. Um, this is huge for our patients. Um, if you think about unmet need in the retina space, um, geographic atrophy is the number one cause of untreatable vision loss for our patients. Uh, geographic atrophy or loss of the retinal pigment epithelium is a relentlessly uh, progressive condition in some patients that uh, eventually leads to center involvement and vision loss. Typically, within two to three years of developing geographic atrophy, it's starting to involve the RPE under the fovea or the center tissue, and, uh, and it causes a lack of um, ability to see centrally, and it can cause every bit as much vision loss as wet age-related macular degeneration. It's a form of uh, advanced dry age-related macular degeneration. I like to think about the tissue that's involved, the RPE, like uh, the pit crew for the retina. It's there to support the retina. Um, it helps give it the fuel to run. It helps regenerate the retina. And so without that tissue, um, the retina can't function. And uh, it's, a, it's a huge problem for our patients. So what is it exactly that Cyphovri does? Uh, it slows the progression of the atrophy that can cause this vision loss. And in the Derby and Oaks study, which were the phase two or phase three clinical studies looking at this treatment for geographic atrophy, it reduced the progression at two years by 20 to 30%. And uh, this may not seem like a lot. It, it will not improve vision. And in fact, patients in those studies continue to lose vision, but it at least is something that can slow this down. And what's very interesting is, is as you look at the um, change or the delta between the two graphs and the treated and, and untreated patients in those studies, um, they were diverging. Uh, and so it's possible that with longer treatment, we may see a greater divergence, which means that it may relatively slow it down more as time goes by and as patients continue to get injections. Speaking of injections, it is given as an injection in the eye. And a lot of our patients with wet macular degeneration are very accustomed to getting injections. Um, this is gonna be something where we actually give injections uh, at a set basis. There's not gonna be really any parameters that we follow to try and you know adjust dosing or anything. It's either gonna be monthly or every other month. Uh, it looks like with monthly, you'll get the maximum effect based off what we see at the clinical studies. With the every of the month, I tell patients probably about a 70% effect um, compared to what you would get with monthly injections. For some patients, it's just going to be too tough to come in and get injections in their eye every month. And so to know that they can get some effect, albeit a lesser effect than what we see with monthly injections, with every other month injections, that will be sufficient. Once again, it will not improve vision. It's just going to slow down the progression of deterioration of the RPE in the back of the eye. A couple things to think about with this medication. Um, there, there is um, uh, potential for infection with any kind of intravitreal injection. There are rare cases of inflammation associated with this. One of the good things I heard on the call discussing the approval is if a patient does have uh, inflammation after an injection, once you get that under control, you can reinitiate treatment with this. Uh, there is an increased risk while receiving treatment for this of developing wet age-related macular degeneration. Now, the good news is, is that wet age-related macular degeneration is treatable. And since we're gonna be seeing these patients frequently, monthly or every other month for their injections, we'll likely be following them and we'll catch that at a very early stage and be able to treat them and, and maintain their vision. Um, we also will be able to treat patients who have existing wet macular degeneration and have concomitant atrophy. And this is a really huge thing for patients because there's a lot of patients with wet AMD that are losing vision progressively because of geographic atrophy, even though they're doing everything right when it comes to getting their injections for their wet AMD. So we will be able to treat those patients with Cyphovri 
it will create a bit of a burden, however, because I don't know how we're gonna manage two injections in one eye on one day. Uh, volume of medicine is gonna be more than the volume that we're treating as far as the actual volume of medicine into the eye. So we might see some pressure issues, might have some more discomfort with these injections compared to what we see with our patients treated with wet AMD. I think at first, at least, we'll probably try to separate the visits. So if a patient has wet AMD and has geographic atrophy, we'll probably bring them in, at least in our practice, on two separate days for those injections. It's going to be a little bit of a burden on the practice uh, to try and figure out how to fit all of these patients in. And uh, certainly a lot of education has to go into training doctors to recognize geographic atrophy at an earlier stage uh, because I do believe that the earlier you diagnose atrophy and start slowing that growth, uh, the less vision loss patients will have over time. So once again, very exciting day to know that we finally have something for the treatment of geographic atrophy. Hopefully we'll have this medication in our clinics in the next couple of weeks uh, and be able to start to utilize it. But congratulations to uh, uh, Pellis and uh, uh, 20 years of doing this and uh, we finally have something that we can do for people. Thanks for watching. Um, like, comment, although I don't really respond too much for comments because I don't get on here that often, uh, and subscribe. Thank you.